Hello, I'm another Magento Dev. Welcome to this tutorial. Uh, today we're going to be looking at doing some more work on the PDP. I mentioned in my last tutorial that we're going to be maybe looking at how to use a module now to sort of inject something, some functionality, some code into the into the PDP uh, rather than working direct in the theme like last time. So what I was going to try and do today is to show, um, inst use a module to install and uh, display uh, some a, a complicated attribute, so something like a multi-select. I Why am I using a module for this functionality? So the functionality that I want to achieve is that I show some iconography that you get on product pages for certain sites um, and I think a good way of displaying that for the merchant would be in a multi-select in the back end so they're able to say this product is X, Y and Z uh, and then those relevant icons then show on the front end of that, you know, on the product page for that product. Um, we can use sort of other tools, we can use a setup script, we can use a block, we can use um, the layout and the template functionality within the module to to get the 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 result that we require um, in a small module that we can then use on on other sites. And it might be that the icons change or the you know the parameters change, but fundamentally we've got a module that is universal. You know, a lot of sites want this type of functionality, or a lot of designers design this functionality in. So let's start. We're going to do it from scratch, uh, as always. So here's my modules folder. I'm going to do it as a as a module in app code, and then within this folder, here's the Magento Wizard. To you know, it speeds up the development of a of a default default module. So this adds all the core files for me. And so we're going to call it um, ethical, and in it goes. So just to, so that's added in all the core files that I'm going to need. To, to get started with this module. Uh, so the first thing that I'm going to throw in there, I'm going to start with the setup script. So in order to um, have a setup script for any module, it needs to be, it needs to reside in the setup folder. So there's the setup folder there, and then within this folder, I'm going to do an install script because I want to install this once. So I'm going to say install data. I'm not going to need to upgrade or, or modify this this attribute. I'm going to I'm going to get it right first time. Um, so I'm going to use install data PHP, and the the extension that I'm using on VS Code throws in some handy uh, boilerplate code uh, for for being able to do install scripts. Um, I have done this before, so to speed up this tutorial, I'm just going to make some modifications to this. Um, Okay, so I've pasted this information in from another another project um, to demonstrate this. Obviously, it saves me typing it all out again. Uh, so essentially, what this is going to do is it's a stand. It's pretty standard in terms of its um, structure and its its dependencies um, for adding a, a attribute, an EAV attribute to the database. Um, now, one of the things to sort of note about this attribute is that you know it is different to say a text field or you know one of the more simpler fields and one of the main reasons for that is that it needs to link somewhere to get its options so what i'm going to do next is i'm going to add a model i'm going to add a model in for the extension options and the way you do this is well this so i'm going to say um I'm going to start a model folder, config. So these are the options that the user will, in the end, be able to select. Config, product, extension, option. Is uh, just create that folder. So these are going to reside in the in the config folder, and then. The file that I'm going to create in here is called extension. Well, as you can sort of see here, oh. whoops, get rid of that. What I was going to do is copy and paste this to make sure I spelled it right. Oh, and it's not a folder either, is it? So extension option.php is what I'm creating. 
And again, it's created me some nice boilerplate code, which I'm just going to get rid of. So essentially, all I need in this file, let's get rid, let's get rid of all this. So we'll keep this. So this is essentially going to be doing, um, doing all the work, which is this here, which is the abstract source. This is going to be doing all the work here, which is abstract source. Yeah, so uh, extension option, and then I want it to extend abstract source, just as you can sort of see there. Okay, right then. Next thing I'm going to need to do is create a protected function. Um, and call it option. Sorry, I always do this the same way, to be honest. Um, and I often always use these same naming conventions. Um, and then I need a public function. Give this a bit of space. Public function called get all options. Okay, so let's just open up some more brackets for our function here. Now, now I wanted to show you a little bit of the working out. So the reason I'm using get all options is that Magento uses this a lot. Um, let's go into somewhere. So it, it's using it. If if you look through the um, code base in vendor for get all options and this is the sort of little magic method that it uses to display a lot of, um, you know, there's a, there's a there's a version of it here. So essentially, uh, this is a good example. So here's, here's mode from the core. And this is, you'll recognize this, this is a attribute that lives in the category where you can select to show product, static block, or products and static block. And as you can see, it's it's gonna be this is this is the structure that I'm gonna be looking for. As you can see, they're using the same, extending the same abstract source um, dependency, and that I'm basically just copying it. So you can get a lot of sort of if you do your reconnaissance in in the Magento core, you, you can't go wrong really. I mean, it, right. The next thing I'm gonna do is I'm gonna add this. I'm going to create basically, I'm going to create an array, an empty array. It's the first thing I'm going to do. And the way you do that is by pointing in your first variable to empty braces. Okay, and now I'm going to fill that array piece by piece with some more objects. And the object, because I want it to be a multi select, has to have a label. And this will be the same with a drop down, um, a drop down of any kind. Um, I still have a label which has, so, so we'll say vegan friendly, which carries the sort of um, the nice name, if you like, the, the one that's going to be visible to, to for people to read. Um, and then a value, which we've all worked with drop downs before. Um, the value is obviously the the thing that gets maybe passed as a data object to um, use it, you know, on the actual option of the drop down, on the actual option tag, um, and that's something that's probably simpler. So I'm going to go with um, just single words. Now I'm going to replicate this three times, and I'm going to just change this, and I'll make this say made in UK. Made in UK. Now I'm obviously doing this manually. You can use this function. You can build extra logic into this function. You know, you could have another function that passes data into this function if you wanted to go get products or you wanted to get something from a factory or a collection. You can do it within here. Uh, but for this demonstration, I'm just going to do it all manually um, and, and show you the manual, um, the output manually. And the main reason is like 
this information isn't currently held anywhere else. It's going to be new information that I'm adding to Magento. Right, the reason I'm calling these things these things is going to become apparent, um, and it's mainly because they link to my icons that I've already got um, that I'm gonna that I'm gonna load into this to get it all working, um, and then simply return all options. So we return the overall um, the overall array that I've built. Um, so that's going to populate this here which is the source. And we'll, we'll have a look at the database in a bit as well. Um, I'm gonna bring that up. So we've got the database up as well, because what we're gonna do is once we've once we've completed this little exercise, we're gonna run setup upgrade, and we're gonna basically test out adding this um, to the back end. So we're gonna, and we're gonna check it in the, we're gonna check the information in the database as well. Because this is a new module, if I run setup upgrade, it should all run at once. Obviously there's more work to be done within this to get it shown on the front end, but I always find that if you are doing an install script or what have you, you're best off running that first, um, checking out, making sure there's no errors and things, and then coming back to the module and developing the view, so the, the front end. Let's run setup upgrade. Okay, so that's run. So now we can check the database. Right, so the first place where I like to check to make sure everything's sort of kicked off okay is this. And this is a log of obviously all of your um, all of your attributes. Uh, sorry, all of your modules um, and what versions are at. And this one wouldn't have existed before because it was brand new and I can see it's hit the database there. And then the other place to check, because we've added an attribute, in EAV attributes, so EAV underscore attribute, and you can see down at the bottom there, ethical has been added. And you can also see where the back end, what the back end model information is. Um, and you can see here, look, the source model is pointing to ASOS ethical model config product. Okay, so we know it's hit the, it's hit the database. Um, and we'll jump into the admin as well. Okay, so you don't want to be loading the front end or the admin after you've done setup upgrade if you're working in developer mode because it'll just absolutely cane you, your equipment. It's Because it, what it'll try and do is build all the static content on the fly, but it's building it from scratch and it takes ages. And it, I don't know if you can hear that on the mic, but my Mac's proper working to, to sort of build it all back. But what I've done is I've sort of pause my browser and I've, I'm just going to run it manually um, to get it done and then we can jump straight onto the back end. So we'll have a quick check in the back end and we should also see, so we checked in the database and our attribute was there. Yep, so it exists there as an attribute and you can see ethical there has been added to the general section. So as you can see, ethical has been added to the general section there. So it's ready to be um, it's ready to be used. So we'll just have a quick look in the products. Product attribute on the front end in the in the PDP. So now we can select multi-select in the back end for the other joiners for part two, which will show you how to use that attribute on the front end.